This is the Bigger Pockets Podcast, show 161. You're listening to Bigger Pockets Radio, simplifying real estate for investors large and small. If you're here looking to learn about real estate investing without all the hype, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join the millions of others who have benefited from BiggerPockets.com, your home for real estate investing online. What's going on, everybody? This is Josh Dorkin, host to the Bigger Pockets Podcast, here with my co-host, Mr. Brandon Turner. What's up, Brandon? Not much. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. How you doing? I'm 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 okay. As I whine about in the show, which people hear about in a little bit, I like tore something funny in my in my shoulder, and now I'm like walking around like crying all the time. I don't know. Oh. It hurts. Let me bust out my violin. I know. There's a uh, you know the price you got to pay when you're trying to get sexy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're going to have to work really, hard <laughs> really hard for that. I did shave a little bit, so I'm a little more kempt today. Yeah, not as not as uh, lumber sexual as not as, as lumber I expect, sexual. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'll get there. Yeah, hey, yeah check you, this out right here. You got a new microphone cover. Wow, it's called the flag. Wow. Whatever they're called, people are listening to this on iTunes. They can't. They can't oh, see that. Well, they the ones who can see it. We got a we got some new mic flags well, to match job. the new logos. Yeah, very exciting. Very well, exciting. Job. Well, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, today's today's kind of a fun show. It as, is a fun as show. They have been of late. I mean, we, you know, really uh, getting some some awesome guests. And, yeah. and today's uh, today's guest, uh, he's he's fantastic. He's fun of personality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he started uh, investing in real estate. He's in the NFL. He started playing. Started taking his money, put it into real estate. I mean, it's just an inspiring story. And not just for people who want to, you know, who are in the NFL. I mean, anybody who wants to turn income today into legacy income. You guys are going to love this show. I mean, just kind of the, the the progression he went from starting with a first single family all the way to a ton of deals. You guys will hear it. It's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm very creative. Lots of learning. And, and uh, yeah, it's a blast. It's a blast. So uh, before we get into it, we've got uh, a, a few things. One, guys. Uh, Which tip? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, no, sure. Okay, rewind that. Uh, uh, this is show 161 <laughs> of the Bigger Pockets podcast. Uh, you can find the show notes at biggerpockets.com slash show 161. Big thank you to everybody who's been leaving ratings and reviews. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, jump in and do that on iTunes and Stitcher and so on and so forth. And uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, let's let's quick tip the sucker. Quick tip. Quick tip. All right. Can I take today's? Um, yeah, sure. All right. Today, I, I, I wanted to say this because Josh would yell at me if I knew you were, I was going to say this. So. Today, or actually yesterday, is Josh's birthday. And not just any birthday. Come on. Josh just turned 40 years old over I'm the hill. 40. <laughs> yeah, Josh just turned 40 years old. So uh, the quick tip today is very, very simple. Go to Twitter and then blow up Josh's Twitter. It's at J.R. Dorkin and wish him a happy birthday. I want him to have a thousand oh. tweets when this episode comes out a thousand maybe ten thousand tweets when this comes out so go blow up uh, josh's twitter at jr dorkin and uh wish him a happy you. birthday thank you're you, welcome bro. thank you're, you you're gonna yeah, be nothing gonna but be, your phone's gonna, gonna be, be beeping really all day because my phone's <laughs> i'm gonna just throw it out the window yeah your phone's gonna go nonstop. all right anyway so uh, all right. you know guys we just want to say you know thank you for listening to the podcast you guys rock and uh you know yeah, you guys rock. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. I think you're going to, I think uh, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to be inspired to go take action because this guy is all about action. Uh, Josh, you want to introduce him? I do. I do. I do. Please. And uh, that was very well said, by the way. Thank you. The, the thank yes. you for listening. Yeah. 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 For sure. You guys all rock. Right. All right, guys. Uh, today's guest is Ryan Broyles. Ryan, uh, Ryan is just this energetic guy with with you know a huge heart and and he's a ball f- ball of energy and and uh he a football uh, of energy <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what a football is relax all right it's a thing so, you shoot in the goal unit basket right exactly exactly so ryan uh ryan played uh for the detroit lions uh for for several years yeah. uh he's been a study of real estate he's been in the real estate game for three years now and uh in that short time he's built quite the portfolio it's very diversified it's uh it's been it's fun to hear his story and and see how he's kind of built out because and 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 brandon said this earlier this is something that uh, anybody can do anybody can really kind of get into this and and follow that path you just have to plan it 
put together your blueprint and do it. And, yeah. and so stay tuned. Ryan's great. And uh, he's, he's got a great story. So yeah. I just I throw this out there before you, before you bring him in. Like a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, NFL player coming in with all this money, just going to buy a bunch of properties for cash and be good with it. You know, like that's actually not the story you'll, you'll hear. Right. Like he uses creative financing on almost everything. He uses part, and partnerships and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, you know, some really kind of advanced stuff as well that you guys will like. So yeah, check yeah. us out. All right. Let's bring him in. Ryan. Welcome to the show. It's good to have you here. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, it should be fun. So, Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, you have kind of an interesting career path that you've taken so far. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've been uh, up to the last few years. Okay. Well, um, I'm an athlete, football athlete. I uh, played football at Oklahoma University, graduated in 2011. Um, I've played with the Detroit Lions the last three years, and I am now a free agent. Um, and I'm here today, I guess. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, uh, you've actually it. played in the NFL, which is, you know, something I know nothing about other than I, yeah, I watched so the Super Bowl. Ball made out of a dead pig. <laughs> okay, good. And they throw yeah. it. And this guy here, he's got hands and he catches and I'm like, he scores. I'm like Russell it's Wilson right here with my like. It's called, called a touchdown, Brandon. <laughs> Good, good. Okay, well, uh, you yeah, know, oh, so you know, I, I, I've got to say that uh, you know the the Denver Broncos, my my new hometown team, are going to the Super Bowl this year. Very excited. So if this comes uh, out after the Super Bowl, right? This may come so out. You, I'm not sure. You're gonna make a fool so. yourself because <laughs> yeah, they're gonna get. Right? Well, we're gonna win the Super Bowl, so it's oh, all I'm good. Sure don't, you don't worry about it. Just yeah. like a couple years yeah. ago with the Seahawks, right? I don't know about yeah, that. listen, same thing. That was game. bull. <laughs> they choked hardcore against the Seahawks. That was an amazing game. Killed us. That was an amazing. Yeah, I scaled us. All right, Ryan. So, <laughs> you know, you're you're um, yeah, you know, you've been in football. You, you've been doing this for a long time, and we have you on the Bigger Pockets podcast. I, why why on earth would we have you on the Bigger Pockets podcast? This is not ESPN. This is a show about real estate. So let's let's get into this. So you're you're apparently in in the game, aren't you? I am definitely in the game. Been in the game for about three and a half, four years now. Yeah. And you're not excited so I'm about fist, that at I'm all. I'm official, man. I'm official, <laughs> you know. Or year, year three, three and a half is a lot better than year one, I'll tell you that. That is right, true. So let's, let's talk yeah. about the genesis of this. Like why, why would you get into real estate investing? You've, you know, I'm, I don't know. I didn't look at the numbers. I don't know how much you made, but you're a pro athlete, so you did all right. And why would, why would you start investing in real estate and let, instead of letting uh, these money managers just take all your loot and run away with it? Yeah, well, actually, when I started out, man, I was I was hesitant to invest in any money. You know, you hear all these horror stories. So one day, I just hopped online. I was like, "What do? What is the best way to build wealth?" And one was real estate, and then two was basically investing in the stock market. So I picked up books on both, um, and I slowly started to realize I have more control over an asset, a tangible asset like real estate, than I do with the market. So I started to dive in on both realms and really just felt that real estate was one of those things I wanted to go full time with when my playing days are over. Um, so now being a free agent, I do have more time to spend. Um, I have aspirations to make it back to the NFL, but real estate just has my pride and joy. I love structure. I love um, being able to dictate some things here and there, and I love the creative financing side to it as well. So um, I feel like I'm just starting out, but there's so much information to just continue to grow and build your, your foundation. And it's just exciting, man. That's cool. Yeah. And isn't em, Emmett, Emmett Smith's got a big old football, uh, real estate company, doesn't he? I've heard that. I've heard that. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah I think cool. Roger Staubach, um, quarterback as well, had something going too. He does. Yeah. Staubach did really, really well. Interesting. Yeah. Really I well. All right. So you know, you'll, <laughs> yeah. be, you'll be the third big name in real estate, right? <laughs> That's cool. Well, Try it, man. I'm trying. Yeah. What, what I like about what you said there was that like, I mean, because a lot of guys do that. They search online for like how to build wealth and people typically come to one of two or maybe three conclusions that it's either business, stocks or real estate. And, you know, my favorite thing about, I mean, I love real estate because like exactly what you said, you get that control of that asset. It's not some money manager out in New York City in a skyscraper, you know, making decisions on my future. And I for love sure. that. that. That's cool. That's cool. So yeah. let's talk about your, I mean, very beginning. What was your first deal? I mean, what did you buy? What did you, how'd you start this thing off? Oh, my first deal. Um, so shortly after I got drafted, uh, after the season was over, um, a friend of mine just approached me and was like, hey, you know, real estate's a good thing. My family's into real estate. And right before that, I actually started reading a book. So I felt like it was a God thing that I kind of, I felt comfortable. Plus, I got approached by an idea, um, a good friend of mine. So we went on, on our first house. It was $80,000. 
Um, and we split the down payment. And then once I saw that money coming in every month, you know, after the mortgage and tax and insurance, all those things are paid. Um, I was like, this is serious. This is real. So I had another friend approach me because I'm, my, my, I'm just buzzing. I'm trying to tell everybody about it. You know, it's the off season. I had nothing else to do, you know, <laughs> but hang out with the wife and go to movies. But um, I approached some other friends of mine and one of them actually flipped houses. So my second deal ever, I went in on the deal and made $40,000. Um, my second go around. So I was like, okay, this is awesome. You know, and so <laughs> bought another a short a one after that. That was actually the only flip I've ever done. So after that, I bought another single family. And then, you know, I'm up to about 40 now with the, another partner of mine. Um, so it's just awesome. Just the, the variations from how I went from point A to getting comfortable, um, jumping in when I wasn't comfortable, learning the traits and continue to learn now. I love that. All right. Awesome. So, you know, you're up to 40 deals. You talked about partners. You talked about the flip. I think we're going to, I think we're going to dive into all that stuff and, and, you know, want to really get more information uh, about all of it. I, I want to rewind a tiny bit before we start to, to get into this a little bit more. Uh, Brandon and I, were, we, we always try to come up with kind of a theme or we always, you know, there's always one thing that we really want to get from somebody when, when we do a show. And sure. today's show, uh, the, the thing that we had talked about is uh, taking great income and and turning it into to to legacy income, which is you know what what you're doing. And for me, you know, it's it's particularly interesting because uh, you see, you, you know, you're a professional athlete. You see so many professional athletes, and whether it's an athlete, a musician, or a movie star, and they're making huge money. A lot of people come into this. They don't have the background. They don't have the knowledge or, or the understanding of how to manage money, how to deal with money. So they turn to somebody else. And at the end of the day, uh, or they don't turn to somebody else and they, they like, you know, hey, it's fun to flash and show off the, the money that you got. Yeah. And they end up broke. You know, there's a guy, I think, uh, what was his name? MC Hammer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, there's a I mean, few of them now. There's yeah. I, yeah. There's there's a lot. I thought I read a stat the other day that said like 80% of NFL players declare bankruptcy within like three years of leaving the NFL. Have you heard that before? It's like some astounding yeah, all number. Kind of numbers. Yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. It's, so yeah, there's a bad number. You just gather information. Yeah, for sure. Those are bad numbers. So a guy like you who's stopping and you're saying, all right, you know, I, I can't let this happen to me. I'm trying to build wealth. I'm trying to change it. Um, mm -hmm. Why, you know, was it just like, Hey, I want to be smart about it. Or, you know, what, why, what makes you different? Because, you know, you're, you're building that wealth, you're investing in that future. Why are you any different yeah. than any of the other guys? Well, I think, um, like you said, a lot of those guys went broke, you know, so we actually, there was a rookie symposium that the rookies go to before or right after they get drafted by the NFL. And one of the classes was personal finance. So I'll tell you, personal finance is really what got me to real estate. So okay. if you don't have your house in order, you don't have a budget set, you don't have saving money um, as a big part of your budget, then you won't be able to, in most cases, get into the real estate or asset accumulation phase. Um, yeah, there are other ways to get into real estate without money. Um, but I felt with the finance background that I had that I, that I needed to um, try to grow my wealth. You know? And so they always talk about passive income. Um, and I wanted to make sure with whatever lump sum of money I have when I finished playing the day, I don't know if it's first, first game or first season or 10 years down the road, I have no idea what it was. So I wanted to have a game plan in place for when that day came. And so I wanted to start to accumulate assets that will pay me even when my occupation's over. So right. that's basically how I got to this point. That's yeah. great. I love that's that. Great. You know, what I love about what you're saying is, you know, like a lot of people listen to this, were like, well, I'm not an NFL player. I'm not an athlete or whatever. But the fact is, I mean, almost everybody, or at least at one point in their life, everybody makes good income at some point. Maybe not like, you know, not everyone's gonna be a millionaire or a billionaire or whatever, Leo, but like everybody at least can earn good money at some point in their life. And so everybody's gonna have to have that question. How do I turn success now into long-term success? And I, I love that conversation. You know, as, as I've grown the last few years, the conversations with the friends of mine have changed from, you know, how do sure. I save up for a car? How do I, you know, buy my first house? And now it's like, how do I make this last? Like, that's probably the number one conversation I have now with friends is how do I make this last forever? And so, uh, I think you're doing an awesome job, obviously. I mean, you're, you're jumping into it. I think that's great. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So cool. Let's, uh, let's, let's by, dive by in the a little way, bit. We, we need to, I think the bigger pockets guys need to be invited to the rookie symposium <laughs> next year. I mean, that, that's what I think. We're going we're to lobby for that. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, it was it was a good time out there. We learned a lot, you know, not just yeah. about um, assets. We learned about just being a, a good gentleman and 
a business person and just having a good head on your shoulder. Oh, so that's, great. that's cool. I did very not very fortunate to be a part of that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know they did that kind Learned of thing. Wine so that's cool. tasting as well too. You oh, know, nice. Wine tasting, how to tie the <laughs> tie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> how to show up on camera, how to behave yourself and yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. That's uh, cool. Don't, don't, uh, don't go p- punching the, uh, the trainer. Uh, <laughs> that happened. Yeah. That's, you know what? I actually played with him. Bl- Blake, um, Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. Yeah. He's actually from Oklahoma. We played, um, AAU basketball together growing up. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah bad move, but, you know. Tough situation. But, hey, it yeah. happens. Oh, he'll bounce back. <laughs> yep, for sure. All right, let's get back into this thing, Brandon. Well, I- I'm wondering, so, like, how, how did you know to trust that guy? You know, we've had other people on the show with partners before, and I'm a big advocate for it. I love using partners. But how do you know when somebody comes to you and says, hey, I've got this good deal, or I want to work with you? How do you know you can trust that guy? Oh, well, like I said, the first person was actually my teacher and she was a lady, um, but she, right. I trusted her to begin with, you know, and then I knew enough about reading through some books and learning cash on cash return and just some basics like that. So I knew to double check and um, I seeked out or people that, that do real estate at that point to make sure that I was getting in something that was going to pay itself off and eventually not make me lose money. Yeah. Um, so I basically, you just got to jump in the game, man. You know, I, I, there's going to be situations I, where you, you feel nervous about it, but you just have to go. I love, I love what you said about <clears throat> reaching out to other people who are actually doing it. And, <laughs> and I think for, for all the new people who are listening to the show who've never, who've never done a deal, we, we, we can't press upon that enough. It's, it's, you know, that's why bigger pockets exist. That's why we built this community. <clears throat> sure. Definitely. And so people can kind of come together and help each other out and they want to help each other out and they're willing to help each other out. So like, that's your best way to get out there is like reach out to, to the community yeah. and start to ask those questions. Right. Yeah. Without a doubt, you know, you have to definitely do that. And even if you don't know any investors, you hopefully know someone that's owned a house and has gone through the process of the title company and gathering insurance and just to get in the game and understand a little bit. And then you grow from there. That's cool. I, I, I Two things you said I want to just emphasize because they were just like right on. When you when I asked you about that, how do you know to trust somebody? The first thing you said was it was a relationship that you had. You know, like a lot of people are just, you know, find some random guy in Craigslist. I, I should partner with that guy. He seems like a good option, right? But no, you had yeah. that you had a relationship first. So I think that's so important when you're partnering with someone. And then secondly, you said you went and learned the basics yourself. So you didn't rely yeah. on the partner just to say, this is a great deal. Like, I think those are the two best piece of advice is if you're going to work with a partner, You've got to have the relationship and you've got to do your own homework. Never rely on someone else to do it. It's like that. You can't outsource your push-ups quote, which I love that quote. Like you yeah. can't outsource yeah. your analysis. Like you got to know what you're doing at least, you know, at a basic level uh, and before you give somebody else, you know, your money. So Are I think you that's really awesome. quoting people about push-ups, man. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you hey, like you can hang out a couple of those. I'm up to like you know like six. six? <laughs> And that's how you do it sometimes. No, yeah. actually, this is a true story, actually. So, like, I was working out last week, and I, like, tore, like, something in my shoulder, and now I can't do anything. So, you oh, know, I lost why, yeah, he, he was He was terrible. curling those five pounds. I was. I had that five-pound barbell. You know, that's a heavy thing. <laughs> All right. So, let's let's get back to the deals. You know, I, lots of interesting stuff, lots of interesting conversation. Uh, let, let's go back to that first deal. That was the $80,000 house. Uh, you mm-hmm. said you split the down payment. Um, and that was a buy and hold property, correct? Yeah, mo- that, yeah, buy and hold. Sorry, uh, okay. my first one was buy and hold. Second was flip, and the rest have been buy and hold. So the first deal, what did that look like? I mean, is, are you and you're buying a property in Oklahoma? I'm assuming is that eighty thousand yeah. dollar property? Okay, yeah. And yeah. you know, uh, what was it like buying your first rental property? What What were the anxieties that you you went through <laughs> as a first time landlord? I mean, what what was that yeah. like? It was it was a little nerve wracking and exciting at the same time. You know, I got a little information. My business partner had some information. Um, but at the end of the day, when you write the check, you know, there's no turning back. And I was just thinking, is this thing going to rent out? Um, am I going to be paying the mortgage? What if the faucet happens or the refrigerator? And like I said earlier, it's just one of those things that you just go in. You know, I, I hear so many success stories, more success than horror. So that that definitely helps. So I heard so many success stories and I was like, why can't this be me? You know, and so did our first deal. We're three years in it. No problems whatsoever. Um, and that first house, which was a blessing that really got my career jump started. So yeah. what, what advice would you give to somebody who's, you know, who's just thinking about it? They're like, you know, I'm close. I keep analyzing. I keep finding properties that look good, but 
I'm so scared because it's scary. It doesn't matter if you're loaded yeah. or if you're poor. Yeah. It's scary to get into this. So, you know, what would you tell those people? Uh, not to overthink it. You know, there's always going to be somebody sleeping in some house. Um, mine is Detroit and some of the other areas, but there's not too many vacancies that you see. That's um, <laughs> sorry, I lived out there. I lived out there. You know, I loved it. I loved <laughs> the people. Uh, but there were some abandoned buildings. So I'm sitting here in my hometown and there's no abandoned houses. You know, there's cars in every driveway. So I was like, what are the odds of really me not renting this place out? Um, and yeah, a year later, I understand vacancy rates and things like that. But at that time, I was like, just kept it simple. There's no vacancy, no vacant houses, especially in this neighborhood. Let's go at it, you know. And so um, that was definitely a learning process, but it was exciting and just not to overthink it and you know, it's going to eventually work out for you if you if you do your homework. Yeah, I, I like that. I think a lot of people do overthink it. They get the analysis paralysis, and they. I mean, there's a there's a fine line, I guess, maybe between you know jumping in unprepared and taking action despite not knowing everything. Right? There's that fine line, and, sure. and and I think the way I like to explain it to people a lot is it's kind of like driving through fog. Like you don't always know what's up ahead. You can't see a thousand feet ahead of you, but the, you take a step forward. Now you can see a little bit more. And you For take sure. another step, another step, and that I think is that that key to action is just moving forward. That's how you'd be able to yes. see more things. But if you just sit back there and looking back, man, there's a lot of fog here. You know, you're never you're <laughs> yeah. never gonna see further because you're just, you're stuck sure. there. So anyway, yeah. so right on for doing that. That's great. Uh, how did you guys manage? Like, um, do you remember? And if you, I don't know if you again, we're not giving advice here. But do you remember? Did you do an LLC? Did you do like a corporation? Yeah, do you remember? A, yeah, did an LLC. Okay. Um, I was always told to do that. So we started with an LLC under two people, and we split up the shares um, that way. Um, property management side, she actually manages the property. Mm -hmm. Um, so we cut a deal there. So I'm up to date just about everything that happens. Um, but yeah, we started out with LLC and basically once we bought more properties, we started tucking those under the same LLC. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And uh, now is she the partner that you've done the bulk of your deals with? Are you doing deals by yourself? Yeah. She's the one I, I started with first. Um, so I bought, like I said, my first one was with her. My second one was by myself on the flip. Um, which I held and then I took um, a line of credit out on that and bought some more properties, which was awesome. And I actually got to see the process work hand in hand. So my second was the, f- the flip, um, then two more with that same partner. Um, and then I leveraged my flip into a bulk deal with another partner of mine and we control 26 properties with that one. Um, mm-hmm. And then recently over the last eight months, um, I bought my first official deal out of Houston was eight single family homes. So I felt I learned through a couple partners that were in the game well before I was, understood how it worked. And now I'm to the point where I'm doing my own deals. Um, and so now I locked up that deal. That thing has been sweet. I've been excited about that. Um, so now I am investing in a 17 unit townhome community, um, not too far from my hometown. I'm actually Another aspect of the real estate game, I'm bringing in investors in on this deal. Um, so I get to be the manager there with some investors. So I think that's just, it's almost like I'm just uptrending when yeah. it comes to real estate. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm taking a healthy progression, I believe, and I'm excited about the future. That sounds awesome. So yeah. l- let's let's get into the progression. And that's the cool thing. Like you, you can decide to get as deep as you want, right? You could say, sure. I'm going to buy one property or that one property can parlay into, you know, I'm just going to focus on single families. But as you, you know, you get to 10, 20, whatever single families, yeah. you're like, yeah. you know, okay, I get this. I got this. I, I could do this with my eyes closed. I want to start, you know, upping the game. I want to get into something else. So you got into sure. uh, this townhome community, the eight homes in Houston and the bulk deal. I want to talk about the bulk deal. Explain what is, what does that mean? You said you got 26 properties. How would you get them? How'd that all come about? What it looked like? So, um, a friend of mine uh, that knew I was into the real estate that has owned, I want to say, he's a business friend of mine. He owned 300 single families at one time. He approached me about a deal. He he potentially wanted me to get in on a deal. Um, and I wasn't really too comfortable doing that. But he was like, you know what? I've got these single families that I need to sell for my, or not single family. They're actually du- duplex, triplex, and fourplexes um, that I need to get rid of because my, my mother basically just wants to retire. So um, another friend of mine that's a business partner of mine as well, we both went on the deal. We used our properties for collateral. So we actually transferred his bank note from his bank 
into our name. So the banks knew how the assets were performing. So they were comfortable with us collateralizing just the house instead of cash money. Um, so that was a blessing. And it was kind of one of those things I didn't, I kind of just did it on the go, you know? And so that thing's worked out for me. Um, so that's basically my, my bulk deal. So you, you, you basically, you had this guy, he had tons of all these properties and, and you, you said, I, I'm going to take a chunk of them. You're trying to dump them. And now all of a sudden you went from having how many properties did you have before that? Four at the time. So you had but, four um, properties and in a flash of a pan, you had 30 properties. And so yeah, well, how, divided by two. So technically 13 at that point. Oh, cause they were that duplexes. Deal. Yeah. It was 26 is. Yeah. Okay. But so we controlled the whole thing. So yes, basically I'm at 34 properties at that time. So, so you got all these, you got all these doors from nothing to something huge. How on earth are you now managing and running that? Because that's a huge leap, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. You know, you have their, your blueprint first. So um, the first three single families that I bought, my, the teacher, the, the person that I um, started the deals with, she manages those. Um, my second one, the person that actually flipped the house for me is managing that one. And so this bulk deal, when we got this information and we got these, this bulk deal together, we came to the conclusion of hiring a business part or a business manager for those deals. So it's pretty much passive. Yes, I check the statements. Yes, I okay maintenance and things like that. But um, as long as the rent's paid, you know what I mean, and everything's moving forward, the bank trusts me. I trust the, the, my business partner, my property manager. Um, we're just smooth selling at that point, you know. So there are situations where we have to go in and replace windows, which is a pain, you know what I mean. So. There's times where we have to, since we didn't use any money up front, we've got to come out of pocket um, either through the cash flow that we have or from our own pocket to sustain those things. Got it. Got it. Now, this business partner, are they uh, employees of yours? Are they independent contractors or are they actually partners in bed on the deals with you? You mean the business manager? The manager. The The manager. The person oh, managing no, the other deals. Yeah, no, they only – yeah, on the bulk deal, they have their own property management company. Okay. Uh, we, yeah, we interviewed a few property man- management companies in the area, and since my guy, my business partner was in the business, he knew and trusted this company. Okay, okay. so it's an outside property management firm. Yes, yes, yes. Got it, got it. I want to get to the point where I can I can potentially manage them, but at the end of the day, I'm looking for the passive income, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it's not a bad thing. You know, a lot of guys, you know, spent like myself, we spent years managing our own properties, and you eventually graduate to hiring somebody. You just skip the whole beginning phase, which is awesome, and went right to hiring well, somebody I, else to I do it. I wasn't full time in it. I'm, I was yep. still playing football, so there was no way. Now, yeah, I could save some money if I managed them all by myself, but I'd be, <laughs> yep. I'd have to go get all the materials and learn some YouTube videos or whatnot <laughs> to make it happen. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and, sure. I, and I don't think you have to, you know, like there, there's so many ways to invest in real estate. Some guys just love doing their own work and some guys have to do it because they have no money. So their hustle and their, you know, their repair and their management is how they buy the property. But if you don't have to do it, I mean, we don't get into real estate to go and manage tenants and install carpet. Like that's just Without not, a doubt. yeah. Yeah. And, that, and in your blueprint, you definitely want to sell whatever it may be that's going to be hit your bottom line in which my property management company, I'll be to put six, eight or 10% or whatever it may be into my bottom line taxes and insurance. So I will know, okay, what's happening? Can I sustain a hit even with using this property management company? Or do I want to sleep at night and have not have someone call me? Yeah. So I think there's just different ways to, to maneuver it. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. All right, so let's move on from those the beginning deals, all the duplexes that you got there. Uh, next, I think you said you bought eight homes in Houston. Now that, that's recent, right? Yeah. So how yes. did those come out? How did you end up getting those? So I was, um, this was actually this past off season. I want to say it was January, maybe January of last year. I was in, actually lived in Dallas and I was looking in downtown Dallas area for apartment building. I just want to structure 15 to 20 units. Um, and in that price point in downtown with so much competition, um, I was winged out. I was basically stuck on a 1960 property that had needed foundation work or a ceiling. So um, my realtor that I worked with in the, in the past brought up, um, these, these homes in Oklahoma city, not Oklahoma city in Houston. Um, so I analyzed that deal. I got to actually talk to the guy that owns the deal and, um, what put the icing on the cake there is he had, I think he was selling maybe 25 properties in a hedge fund company. Not sure which one came in and bought maybe 15, 20 of them. So I was like, okay, if they're buying from this guy, I'm in good company. You know what I mean? My numbers work well. These hedge funds are coming and snatching these things up. My realtors are on the number. Um, 
I'm not too familiar with the area, but I know the numbers work. Um, I had made a trip out there to actually check over the properties. Um, and so I was in that deal. So I think the way I structure my business at that point was in Oklahoma, I'm not going to get as much appreciation as I would in a Houston. So I feel like I have a balance with my financial background that I need to hit different areas, um, attack cash flow in some areas, attack appreciation in some areas. So it kind of rounds things out. So that was my biggest push to make that one happen, get more income, appreciation. Um, felt good about the deal. And I guess I keep saying it. Now I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think that, yeah. I think that's smart, though. The well-rounded portfolio, right? Like some people choose just cash flow. Some choose more of an appreciating market. And yeah. I, I, I don't think it's a bad idea at all to do what you did to, to kind of leverage. I'm trying to do the same thing right now myself to get a mixture yeah. of both because then you have the fallback sure. on the cash flow if you need it. You got the appreciation, the benefit for growing wealth that way. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Without hey, a doubt. Without a doubt. So you, so you mentioned the financial background. Was that were you a, a business student undergrad? Was that what we're talking about? What are we talking no, about? No, like yeah. When I told you when I we did the rookie symposium, um, and then after that, I just looked up how to build assets. Okay. And so at that point, it just came down to real estate and the stock market. Yeah. Uh, and so I guess you can't really have investing in the stock market without having a budget. So I went back to the micro way of thinking and figuring out, okay, what's my income, my expenses. All right, so you just mentioned, you know, like you did the the symposium thing. You learned a lot about personal finance. You started researching it and budgeting and all that. Well, this is just maybe my opinion, but when I see a, a lot of celebrity athletes or just, you know, people who make a lot of money suddenly uh, or just good income, I mean, it could be anything, right? A lot of them don't live within their means. I mean, a lot of people just, they, they buy the most expensive car, the most expensive house and whatever else like that. And, and again, like it could be anybody that just suddenly finds themselves making more than they did before. How did you prevent against that? Like, how did you have the willpower to say, I'm not going to go buy a $300,000 car? Maybe you did. I don't know. But like, you, know, like, you know what I mean? Like, how, <laughs> yeah. do, you, how do you not go and, and spend everything you have uh, right away? Um, I think I, I got to the point where I understood um, financial independence um, I wanted to get to the point where my cash flow or the cash that I have can sustain me for a certain amount of time. So if I were to make a million dollars a year and spend a million, can I retire next year? No. Yeah. So that I started thinking about these numbers. What will it take for me to get to whatever I'm spending um, to be financially free? So I can do real estate full time or whatever it may be without the pressures. So that was really the biggest thing that stuck to me. I, did, I knew I didn't want to work until I was 65 years old. Right. You know, so I want to try to speed up the process. And obviously you, you buy assets, um, whether it's paper assets or it's tangible, physical as- asset um, that will help catapult me to that point and get income um, so I could be free at that point. That's smart. Do, do you ever find yourself like, do you, are you like an evangelist for this? Like uh, when you're playing, you know, with your team members and stuff? Oh, like, he do totally you, is. He's, you, he's <laughs> got the bug, man. When, when we brought him on, man, he, was, he had that grin. From ear to ear, so excited to talk about real estate. I know it, right? Yeah, I'm, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm always been like a teacher leader type person, you know. So if I grasp some idea, I definitely try to share the wealth. You know, I didn't get to this point by just waking up one day. People had to urge me to um, better myself, and I feel like that's my calling. So we'll get to the deal that I'm doing now that I actually opened up to investors. Some investors that may have never been able to do that, but they've heard about my successes. Um, business wise or even on the field and they looked up to me as an athlete. Um, so I get to open the doors for other people to be inspired. So I think that's uh, my mission to this day. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Nice. I, w- I want to go to the the blueprint. You mentioned it a few times. You know, you talked about your blueprint. What, what is your blueprint? What's you, you've got a plan and, and, and I'm just curious what, what exactly that is. I feel like it, it's always evolving, to be honest, man. Sure. Um, after my first house, I'm thinking, okay, what do I need to get to 10 houses? And I thought I was going to be done at 10 houses, you know? So um, I think my overall blueprint is just to be financially free, you know, to, to have enough cash flow and assets to sustain my lifestyle with my wife and uh, my little boy that's seven months old now. So, and, and oh, nice. to leave a legacy for him. So um, I'm sure at my age right now, I may be greedy and trying to build my foundation as fast as possible. And then there's going to be times where I want to just sit back and be able to enjoy life. So I feel like I'm on pace to do both of those things. So yeah. I, 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 I'm going to break something to you. Uh, I, I don't know if you knew this or not, but 
you're you're not going to stop at the point where you're financially free. I I could All see right, it no. in you. You got the well, obviously, yeah. I'm already I'm already there. God willing, God blessing. Um, right, right, right. But it, it it's fun now. It's a, it's a game to me. And like I said, I get to open up this next deal for people that may not be able to do something like this. So um, yeah. I can only imagine where the next ten years are going to take me. So That's let's cool. talk about that because I, you know we've talked to a lot of people who've gotten to that point. You know, you get to the line where yeah, you're done. You got to what you wanted to do initially, which is get yeah. you know enough assets, real estate that that you're fine. You know, you're you're going to be fine. Um, but then you keep going, and so you keep going. You said it's the game. To, it's a game to you. It's fun to you, and and that's really cool. There's that transition. You you get so much joy out of kind of working real estate and and being creative and coming up with ideas, you know, t- can you talk a little bit more about like that transition? Cause there had to be a point in your mind where you're like, yeah, okay, we're good. I'm not stopping. I am not yeah. stopping. And it's, well, I don't think it's a greed thing, right? No, it's, it, it's fun. It's, it's, it's an occupation. We all need to stay busy. It doesn't matter if you're, I don't, I don't know, say a guy that has a hundred million dollars at say Mark Zuckerberg at whatever age he is. You know, right. if he enjoys yeah. what he does, he's going to continue to do it. And then anything that comes is a blessing. Right. Um, so that's really where I am today. Um, and in real estate, there's multiple ways to do it, you know, and to, I'm a I'm a passive um, investor. Um, I want to get into the flips next. I want to learn how contractors build and developers do their thing, you know, and I want to get into some of those things as as I progress. So there's so many different assets or facets to real estate you can, I don't think at this point that I'm I'm done exploring um, those things. So that's really what keeps me going. That's cool. cool. That's what I love about real estate too. Is there's, you can just keep exploring your whole life. I mean, there's guys that are 80, <laughs> yeah. 90 years old on bigger pockets in the forums, and they're still discovering new things all the time. That's yeah, fun. Yeah, I love yeah. that stuff. That's like so I just dollar, had a guy right? <laughs> had a guy uh, contact me yesterday about investing in lake homes, and I was like, I've never thought about investing in a lake home, you yeah. know. And I was like. If there's a market there, there's a market there. But there's so many ways I can't even think of um, ways to invest in the game. You know, yeah. I, I call it a game. I'm an athlete, so sorry about no, that. No, I call it a game too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it a game. game. Yeah. yeah, I've yeah. been calling that since like <laughs> Monopoly. Like it's like a giant game of Monopoly, and I love that. So. Yeah, you try to go get the best deal, and your heart's pounding. You know, it's, it's, yep. it's exciting for sure. That's what it is. All right, so let's <laughs> talk about the 17 unit townhome community. Why did you decide to build a 17 unit townhome community? Um, yeah, well, I think I got a unique perspective. So I was telling you guys that I was looking in, in Oak, not Oklahoma, I was looking in Dallas for a, um, an apartment building. Yep. Um, and I was basically priced out of there. Um, and so when I got to Oklahoma, I moved back to Oklahoma, hometown. I was with the realtor that I've worked with for a couple of years or a year now, um, brought me this deal that has not hit the market yet. Um, he knew I was in the market to buy 15 to 20 units. Um, so he sent me this deal. He sent me a couple of deals. Actually, I found the one that I liked, which was going to be a new build. And I was thinking, you know what? I've got buildings that are 19 from 1970. I got some 1980s. Let's throw in a one that I know I can buy and hold for longer before the cycle is start to turn and I have to sell. And so a new bill was fit the, fit the portfolio for me. Um, so I initially went into that deal, worked the numbers, talked to the builders, the contractors, the architects, um, basically everything I needed to know about the deal. It felt so good, which it does to this day. Um, then I was thinking, you know what? Am I greedy here? Do I really need this? Yes, it's a learning process, but what better way to bring other people along on a new build um, following someone that has a resume, not that I'm Donald Trump or who <laughs> doesn't offend anybody, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people that may look up to me, I was like, what better time to start on a new build where you know there's not going to be maintenance fees? There's not I mean, going to be all these things that are just uncertain. Why not open the doors for this one? So I actually opened the doors, um, actually on social media at that, um, and I've raised some money, um, a lot more than I thought I would at this point. <laughs> Uh, so it's just going to be fun. I got to talk to those guys. I'm like I said, I'm a I'm a leader. I'm a teacher. So I get to think about what I'm going to present to these to these investors, so they can understand the game. And they're asking me questions questions I haven't thought about since my first home. You know, so it keeps it keeps me sharp as well. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I I I think it's solid. You know, I've never really considered building, uh, but I like the idea of that. You know, kind of diversifying your real estate into something like why not? If you got old stuff, why not buy you know build a few new things? So when you bought it, yeah. did you did you buy just a piece of land, or did you buy like the land with the plans already in the development kind of? Yeah, so together? it was it was basically I wouldn't say it was turnkey, but they already had the land plotted. 
Um, and they were in the, the aspect of, I guess, getting titles and um, still finishing the build outs and things like that. So I kind of went into the process that was already going. Um, so I, I got to negotiate a deal before it hit the market. Um, but basically the floor plans were already set. I got to go in and fix the build outs and things like that. Um, but the location was already set. So it was kind of turnkey, but I'm still going through the process of learning what it takes to be a builder. And then on top of that, um, bringing in investors. Yeah. So yeah. Could, could we talk about the, that structuring and, and how you ended up actually doing that? So you're coming in, um, what, what did this, what, what's the cost on this project? Um, 1.85 million. 185. And you said, I'm going to put in X amount of that 185 and I want to yeah. raise what, a million, a million and a half, whatever it is that you raise. How do you, how do you now then go and structure the uh, entity such that, you know, you can go and actually raise this money and, and not fall fall under, you know, there's all, all sorts of laws that, you know, well, I'll, without a doubt. Yeah. And, I, and I'm slowly starting to learn this. So, um, uh, the, the buildings, we won't close until about September of this year. So I'm about three months in it. No, the only money I have in is my earnest money. Um, so I'm still going through those contract phases with my, um, my accountant, um, my lawyer as well to make sure that we have the best plan in place. And I know there's things that you can put on a contract and you can't. Um, so I'm learning that as we go. Um, but I am still keeping the investors up to date that have given me a commitment uh, to go forward. But like I said before, my whole purpose on the deal to begin with was me going in by myself. Um, so now whatever comes to the table is just more the merrier, you know? So there's yeah. really no pressure of, is this deal going to make it to the closing day? Am I going to have enough money? I'm already to the point where whatever comes in, it's basically just going to benefit the whole group. Right on. Right on. Is, is that like a, a somebody stepping on your dog, Brandon? Or is, <laughs> is that Ryan's baby squeezing a play toy? Oh, sorry. You know. <laughs> no, that's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It's funny. Charlie, come here. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah right? I actually got my dogs in here with me, but they're both sleeping. So Yeah, they're quiet. <laughs> Yeah, my little guy's having a good time over there. Well, that's nice. good. That's good. Well, hey, yeah. uh, I, I want to move to the fire round here in a second. But before we do, I want to ask you, uh, you know, what's the long term plan? I mean, like you said, you know, this is a game that you're playing and you're not going to stop right now. Like, do you have a unit number you want to achieve? Do you have a goal for like, I want 100 units or 1000 units or do you just, you know, going to see where it goes? Yeah, well, initially, like I said, my goal was 10. Um, and I clicked that pretty quick. Um, so then I was reading some articles and I felt 100 was a good landmark, um, but I think after this next deal that I go into, I may look on the commercial side um, just to diversify a little bit more as well. But I think my bread and butter will be the residential homes, um, but I can't really give you a number um, because I'm already to the point where I think if I just continue to extend myself, there's going to be a point of no return. So what I have right now, I feel like I can continue to leverage those things moving forward. So whatever happens, if I'm going to go and hunt the best deals. And if I don't get the best deals, these next go around, I'm not going to take them because I'm already where I need to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. So I think so you, this, don't, you don't want to overextend yourself. Is basically without a saying. doubt. Yeah. 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 Cool. Oh, cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good. It, so, it sounds like a, a really cool story. I mean, I, for me, I love the passion. Uh, you know, I, I, every time you, you're talking, you're glowing for those people who are listening. You know, if you watch the YouTube <laughs> video, I mean, you can just see that this guy's face light up. It's, that's sheer joy. I'm always smiling, man. Life is life is good. You know, you, yeah. life is what you take it, really. You know, so I'm honored to be on Bigger Pockets with you guys, reading your articles. Um, it's an honor to be honest. So I'm I'm just all smiles right now. Uh, no, that's, a, <laughs> that's awesome. That's so yeah, cool. All right, sure. so let's let's move to the fire round. It's time for the fire round. <laughs> All right, the fire round. Let's go to that. These questions come direct out of the Bigger Pockets forums. And so we're going to fire a match you, Ryan. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Number one, I'm nervous to jump into real estate. I've been spinning my wheels for years. How do I finally pull the trigger? You pull the trigger. <laughs> that's, like, that's simple. If you feel good about the game plan and you feel good about moving in that that direction, you pull the trigger and, and see what happens and you'll learn on the go. Yeah, I like it. Go. Fair enough. All right. Should I buy or flip a rental for my first deal? Should I flip or buy a rental? Yeah, flip or buy. What, what did I say? <laughs> buy or flip a rental. Oh, it's, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, yeah. close enough. Should well, I? Personally, yeah. 
personally, I, I buy. I think you should buy the first one. Um, but if you have a, a group uh, that you trust around you um, to flip a property, go ahead and flip it. But that wasn't my my thought press moving forward. I was too nervous to actually go in in that that type of magnitude. But to each his own. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, number three. My property manager is not communicating very well with me. How do I get them to communicate better? Uh, I think if they mess up one time, you give them one more. Um, if you call the phone, that's one thing that I've learned with property managers. Um, if they do not answer the phone or call me back within 24 hours, I think it's time to move on. Um, especially if you have a, a hunch about something not working right or something not going right. I think it's there's multiple out there, so I think it's best to move on. All right. Except, of course, if you live in Podunk, Washington, where Brandon is, where <laughs> is he is now <laughs> managing like one man. <laughs> his own property because he can't. Well, and there's a market there. Go ahead and uh, start a new I one. I know. I really need to. Uh, <laughs> yep. yeah, I need yeah. to. For sure. For sure. All right. Last question from the fire round. Should I pay off my primary home that I live in or use the money to buy some more properties? Leverage it. I think depending on your age, um, the younger you are, I believe you should not pay off your mortgage. Um, to go and hold more assets that will eventually pay for your mortgage. Um, but I think as you age, you probably don't want to play the debt game and even manage real estate or manage, manage property managers, maybe just pay off the mortgage. Fair enough. Good answers. Cool. All right. Awesome. All right, let's move on and uh, wrap this thing up with the world famous. Famous for. All right, the famous four. These questions are asked of every guest every week. And so uh, you've probably heard them before, but I'm going to throw them at you. Number one, what is your favorite real estate related book? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. All right. All right. That's, That's got to be a staple, right? It is. It is. It's a staple. It's yeah. a staple. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Right. For sure. All right. Business book. What, what You got any business books that you've been reading? Anything of interest? Ah, uh, you know, I always revert back to investing for dummies. So I don't know if it's really on the outside of the stock market. But like I said, I'm a stock market and a real estate guy. Those are really two things that I pay attention to. Um, but investing for dummies, I feel like that's got many bullet points. I'm not really much of a fluff guy, story guy. I like just bullet points. So investing for dummies. Cool. 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 All right. What do you do for fun? You got a kid? What, 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 what are you doing besides Yeah, I got a seven month old. Me and my wife, we're always hanging out, having a good time. Um, we, nice. we usually go on daily walks. Uh, nice. We've got a park right down the street from us, and we actually have good friends in the neighborhood that we get to go hang out, eat dinner, make taco night, and whatever it may be, um, and working out. That nice. sounds good. Taco That's night. That sounds really good. Big. Taco yeah. night's awesome. Yeah, it's Monday night. <laughs> hey, Heather, we should have taco night. <laughs> 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 no, that's that's awesome. Um, and yeah. and I I was just gonna say, you are currently a free agent, correct? I am. Yeah. All right. So who do you want to play for? Now I just want to go out there and run around and catch some balls, man. I, I get this question <laughs> all the time. Maybe four years ago, I'd say I want to play with Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, but now I just want to go on and enjoy the game. You know? We could, we could use you. I, we could use you in the Seahawks. So you know, come on yeah. over. Well, whoever, if a quarterback can throw, <laughs> I'm there, and pretty much all of them can. They're nice. all listening to the show right now. Every so one of just, them. Just name drop and, and you know. Oh, Russell sure. Wilson. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, right. Actually, I, I play with Sam Bradford. He's at the Eagles now. Um, I would love to go play with my guy again. Um, Landry Jones is at the Steelers. Love to play with my guy again. We've got chemistry, you know. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But Come we'll on, see. Landry. There's, call, there's call 32. I know, right? Yeah, there's 32 teams out there, you know, and I hope some guys are vouching for me just like that. Nice. All right. Nice. All right. Yeah. My la- last question of the day from from me. What do you believe sets apart successful real estate investors from those who give up, fail, or never get started? Um, I think you have to have a blueprint. You have to have a plan going in from day one. Um, and those things will change, but I think any successful business, they have bullet points that they want to follow, um, checklists that they want to improve on. Um, and I have daily checklists. I'll show you my office. It's all over the place. And I go down the list every day. Um, so I think people that do not have a plan will get lost and they might dabble in other areas. But if you have a goal in mind, say, for instance, 10 homes, how do I get to those 10 homes? And am I doing something every day that will get you the point? But I think the guys that are halfway in, halfway out, those are the ones that potentially won't make it. Because if you want to be successful in this world, you have to put in time. Awesome. That is a great answer. 
kind of stuff. <laughs> All right. So where can people find out more about you? Obviously they can look you up, but like, you know, if people want to reach out with you, potentially, you know, want to ask you questions or do business or yeah. anything like that. Do you have a website or anything? Um, I do have a website. It's um, the Ryan L as in Larry broils.com website. Um, you can find me on there. There's actually a link at the top where you can shoot me an email. Um, I'm on Twitter at Ryan broils and on Facebook at Ryan broils. Um, so that's the best way to get a hold of me. I'm going to go nice. follow you on Twitter right now. And, you know, of course, you're on Bigger <laughs> Pockets. I'm following Bigger Pockets. Better believe that. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. We just need to get you to set up a profile. No pressure or anything. You know what? Uh, the funny thing is. I'm going to call you out right here. No, no. Check me out. The funny thing is, is maybe a couple days before I got approached through you all on Facebook or Twitter to do this, yep. I saw on the Bigger Pockets you could log in and potentially get on a podcast. So I actually filled out that information. Two days later, I get hooked up with um, who was that? Hillary. Hillary yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on on Twitter. That's so funny. It was like a double whammy. Yeah, so <laughs> that's awesome. There. Well, so I <laughs> I great. saw. I think you you wrote something, or there was something on Twitter. There was something that I saw from you, and it was you like sharing how excited you were about real estate. And I saw that, and I was like, "All right, we got to have this guy. Like, there's this guy's got such passion." So we got to reach yeah. out to him and find out. And Hillary got you, and you know, sounded like Sweet. it yeah. worked out. And I definitely follow you guys. Sometimes I'll just throw in like random real estate questions, and Bigger Pockets pops up. So I, that's actually how I learned about Bigger Pockets about three years ago. Is I typed in a question, and it's Bigger Pockets. You guys have so much substance. So that's nice. really a one-stop shop for sure. I, I appreciate it. that. I love it. Yeah. Hey, so anybody listening, this is Ryan Broyles. Bigger Pockets podcast, show 161. Uh, check out the show notes at biggerpockets.com slash show 161. I'm going to ch- put, put up a challenge to Ryan. If anyone has questions, Ryan, jump in, answer those questions on the show notes. I know you're passionate. Thank you so, so much for coming on and, and giving us your time. And uh, the, the last thing is keep doing what you do, like talking about real sure. estate, educating the people that, you know, that's that's our mission. We want We want everybody to know that, this is a possibility for them. It doesn't matter who you are, what background you come from. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, using real estate as a means to build wealth is is so powerful. And, and the more we can spread the word to everybody, uh, the more opportunity people have. Yeah, de- definitely. You know, it's surprising how many people don't understand the game. It's surprising how many homeowners just stay at one home. You know, um, it's surprising that. Some people don't have, live on a budget. It's surprising that people don't understand passive income. There's a lot of thing about financial literacy that a lot of people don't understand. So I think once those people start to understand those, then these next challenges of mastering real estate per se um, will be the next wave of things to do. So um, that's really it's really awesome what you guys do, spreading the word as well, making people feel comfortable. So glad to be a part of it. Thanks, awesome. Man. Thank, thank you. you. Thank we'll you. see well, you around. Thanks for coming on for the sure. show. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you. All right. That was show 161 of the Bigger Pockets podcast. Big thanks again to Ryan. I love I love his story. I'm fired I, up. I'm fired up. I'm fired I, up. I love I love that he's a fan <laughs> of Bigger Pockets. I, mean, I that, love that. That fires me up. I love that he's out there, you know, spreading the gospel of real estate investing to anybody and everybody and he's so enthusiastic about it. Uh it's uh that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And, uh, you know, like I said, we said at the beginning of the show, you don't have to be an NFL player. You don't have to be a professional athlete or movie star or whatever, uh, you know, to enjoy the show. Cause everything you talked about is stuff that real people, like everybody listening can apply to their life. So hopefully you guys do that. You take action on some stuff. He said, pull that trigger, like he said, and just go do something, walk through that fog. Yeah. And be smart. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, he said, I need to be smart with my money. I'm going to yeah. budget you know, I'm going to look at how much I make, how much I spend and figure out what I need to do in order to cover that uh, through real estate. And that is what you need to be doing. If you're trying to build wealth through real estate or you're trying to use real estate as a means to supplement your wealth, a lot of people say, well, how do I get started? You know what? Don't even start in real estate. Start with your budget. Yeah. You know, what, what is it? And what are you spending? How, how much, how many Starbucks are you buying a week? But you know, <laughs> what are you at now, Brandon? I'm at like one a week now. I am that's cutting impressive. back, that's but impressive. only because the peppermint hot chocolate has like forty thousand calories. So yeah, I'm trying that to. That thing is ridiculous. You know, like I said at the beginning of the show, it's it's tough work getting sexy. You know, so right. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not go there ever, ever again. Uh, do you want me to take off my shirt? No, you don't want that. Yeah, please don't. Please don't. All right, let's get out of here.
I, I've been in a hotel room with you, man. It's, it's not pretty. It's scary and smells yeah. bad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> on that note, guys, jump on biggerpockets.com, set up an account, make sure you're reading the blog, make sure you're listening to the podcast. Tell anybody, tell everybody to check us out. Please spread the word of bigger pockets, spread the word of real estate and, and get out there and make it happen. Thank you so much for listening. I am Josh Dorkin signing off. You're listening to bigger pockets radio, simplifying real estate for investors, large and small. If you're here looking to learn about real estate investing without all the hype, you're in the right place. Be sure to join the millions of others who have benefited from biggerpockets.com. Your home for real estate investing online.